Many artists use splatter technique to create interesting and useful textures in their paintings. Splatter can take a plain shape and break it up into a number of semi-distinct passages. It can make a plain shape more interesting. It can also be used to modify an area of flat colour and it can be used to add depth to a painting. Specifically in the foreground, spatter tends to add a new level of detail that you don't see in the distant portions of the, um, the vista in your painting. In this video I'll be covering a number of ways in which you can create splatter and I'll finish the video with a demonstration painting uh, where I use most of the techniques that I discuss during this video. Hi, my name is Joe Cartwright. Welcome to my studio. My aim with these videos is to help you paint better watercolours. And remember, if you like what you see, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be informed of each new video I produce. A common way to use splatter is when you have wet paper and then you pick up some paint I'll pick a couple of colours just to show you how they separate on the wet paper. And you can use this to create interesting shapes. When creating splatter, most of the paint will spray in the direction you are pointing the brush. So if I hold the brush like this, I'll get a line that's more vertical. If I hold it on the side like this, I get more of a horizontal line. So keep that in mind, because if you're trying to splatter in this portion of your painting, but you hold the brush like this, you'll get a lot more paint uh, ending up in this portion. So hold it either in this direction or even down a little bit and you will have less splatter landing in portions of your painting where you don't want any splatter. The other thing to note is depending on how wet the paper is and the paint consistency that you're splattering with, the effects you get will vary, right? So the more the wet of the paper, the wet of the brush, the softer an edge, um, the drier the paper and the thicker the paint, the, um, the sharper the edge to the point where if you, if you use splatter on dry paper, which I don't use very often, but certainly there'd be opportunities to use this within a painting. But here you get quite sharp edges, here quite soft edges. And then as you can see here, with the speed of the brush, you can, you can create you know, quite distinct um, lines where the, the paint just runs along the very tip of the paper. Now you can create splatter the way I, I do is I hold the brush um, back here and have my finger close to the brush hairs and then when I tap my finger like that the paint comes off the brush. I generally use a size 8 or a size 10 brush if it's a big painting, maybe a size 12 brush, but the bigger the brush, the harder it is to control where the paint will go. Some people may have difficulty with this technique, possibly because they have arthritis or some other problem with their finger. If you find it physically painful to tap your finger with the brush, then you can use another object instead of your finger that works just as well. Sometimes if you, if you don't want as much splatter, you can also use the soft part of your finger and that just gives you a slightly different effect. Effectively when it hits your finger the brush slows down a little bit slower than when it hits 
the bony part of your finger. Another way to do it is to just tap the brush like this, where you're holding it back here and just tapping it, or even tapping it from above. That tends to reduce the explosiveness of the splatter. It really doesn't matter how you do it. I'm going to cover some of the uh, problems students have with this technique. I'll just start by wetting part of my paper. For this exercise, uh, um, I'm just wetting the paper with, um, with water. But if this was a landscape where I had done the sky and then created the underpainting uh, for the ground, while that is wet, I'll, I, um, I go into the foreground with different colours to create that texture in the foreground, which helps add a little bit of depth to my painting. Now, one of the problems students have with this technique is they they start with paint that's too weak. If I start with a brush load of diluted paint, and it's easy when you look in a palette like this, that you know, the, the paint still looks quite strong, but really if I was to test it on a scrap piece of paper, it's not that strong. So what happens is they, they create splatter, but it very quickly disperses and doesn't stay where you put it. The way to fix that is to make sure that you, you use thicker paint like I'm using here and you can see how this is not spreading anywhere near as much as these other marks. Another problem they have is they pick up, their, their brush has too much paint in it and when they use the, the splatter it goes everywhere. So when you're practicing try to minimize the amount of paint in your brush. Don't use a fully loaded brush. So a fully loaded brush is one that where you do that and it'll drip out the end. Think in terms of maybe half loaded brush and then that gives you a little bit more control. And just to reiterate another problem students have is they, they hold the brush so that it's pointing in the wrong direction. Then they get paint in this part of the painting rather than keeping it down below. Sometimes too, not that often, but students can have splatter that's too dark. So if you, here for instance, if you go in and the splatter is too dark, then obviously um, you need to have added more water to your mixture. The right time to adjust your paint consistency is after the first mark. You don't keep going like this and then think, oh, that's too strong. At that point, if that, if that happened to be too dark, that's when you would add more water to your mixture and dilute it. Now, sometimes when, if you do have an area that you think is too dark, you can just get um, a brush with, so it's half loaded with just clean water and with practice you can use, uh, you can splatter water on it and that will um, one dilute the mixture on your paper but also in itself create some interesting shapes. I'm now going to apply these techniques that I've been discussing in creating a full painting that are somewhat abstract. I mainly use this as an exercise to help my students get familiar with um, splattering, controlling the paint consistencies, and also uh, how to use the spray bottle and I even use some salt to create additional texture. So what I'm going to do first is I'll wet the back of the paper so that it, the paper will sit on the board nice and flat.
Now, one thing you do have to take into account when you're uh, using this technique, and that is that the splatter will go not just in other parts of your painting um, that you may not want it to go in, but it can also end up on the floor, on the wall, on your desk. So please um, be mindful of that and don't have anything in your environment that you're that's that precious to you that you wouldn't want to get um, paint on it. If need be, you should protect you know, your floor and the wall and the table if you have an issue with getting any paint on those objects. All right, the way I, I do this painting is I start by s splattering water without any uh, immediate idea of where it's going to go. Um, I do generally spend some time thinking about the the colors I'm going to use and I I would uh, in it, and in this case I'm going to lean very heavily towards the reds and the oranges and, and maybe the yellows with just a little bit of blue by working primarily with harmonious colors which are colors beside one another in the color wheel and only using a small amount of the third primary color I can create brighter paintings with less greys. If I use all three primaries, I'll start getting more greys in my painting. So I'll just begin by getting a very, very wet brush, just a drippy brush, and I'll just splatter water um, here and there. There we go. And I might even throw some in a horizontal fashion here. Let's put some water in my palette. And let's go with some really bright Scarlet Lake here. So again, there we go. Depending on where you hold it, or you can you can tap it this way, and you get uh, less explosive splatter. Whereas this is a, a lot more explosive and also quite directional. Okay, so I'm going to create a pattern of some vertical shapes up here, and then maybe some horizontal ones here. Where they hit the wet paper, because of that splattering of the water, you get some really lovely effects where the splatter hits the wet paint and, and creates some of these soft edges. Where the splatter hits the dry paper, then you get sharper and more defined edges. Here, we'll get some yellow. This is cad yellow in my case. Pick up some of the permanent rose. Now you can see as the yellows and reds start to merge together, they create some interesting effects and shapes. Okay.
and I can use thicker paint. Here I'm using a very wet brush, right, so the, I'm not trying to control the, uh, the paint to any great extent. And what I usually find at some point, I get an idea of what I can turn this into, or at other times it just remains an abstract painting. You can also strategically soften areas of your painting by spraying with a spray bottle. And that will cause that paint to flow in a different direction. So you can you can use it in different ways. I might wet this area. As I said, this is really just a fun exercise um, and to teach you not to be too scared about splatter. I'll add some French ultramarine into the permanent rows. And I'm not being too particular about uh, the direction of the splatter, um, other than, you know, I want solid masses here and here and along here, but I don't mind some um, landing in this wet area. Again, this is an exercise. It's not designed to be a finished painting, but you can certainly end up with some lovely effects. And obviously if you're using brushes without as much paint in them and, and smaller brushes then it's a lot easier to control you know how far the paint sprays around your surface. And for me, this is a nice break from my more um, traditional impressionist realist paintings that I do, whether it be landscapes or street scenes. If you want a more solid mass, you can, you can start to splatter like that and then just keep splattering the same spot and it will just build up. I don't want to lose all the white areas. And then at some point, if you want, you can then even, um, you know, 
just just throw in the odd brush marks if, if that suits the design of your painting. We'll just make this a bit more solid. At any time you can just get water and splatter water on your painting and that creates a particular effect. It also lightens the, um, the, uh, the colours in an area. dry some of this excess moisture the other thing with this technique too it's it's a one go painting you know there's no underpainting Although you could use it as an underpainting if, if you wanted to. Okay. What I might do, because I, I like this effect here, I might actually just throw in some solid shapes down here. And for that, I'll just use a size 12 brush. And use some French ultramarine, quite thick paint. And burnt sienna. Normally I paint with dry paint, in this case I, I've just filled the paint well with fresh paint. So I have to be a bit more careful with it. And as long as you keep the shine on your paper, you won't create mud. Paints will remain nice and clean and transparent looking. There we go. So 
that does that stage. And if you want to create an extra level of texture here, what you can do is uh, maybe get some sea salt. Again, when I do this exercise with my students, this is also a, a good time to um, learn about how to use sea salt. Um, it, and some of the things you need to know is there's different, obviously, uh, different grades of salt. This is just your, your normal table salt. Um, here and here I've got the rock salt and the rock salt tends to give you a different texture and I suggest you experiment with them before you start using it. But say I wanted to um, create some more texture in this area, I can drop the salt from fairly close to the paper. If you drop them from too high the salt will tend to bounce and go everywhere. You don't need a lot of salt and I normally go in just as the paper is losing uh, you know its shine uh, but it still needs a bit of moisture on it so it still has a shine on it but it's not you know running down the paper to any great extent. Just some more texture. Any technique that helps you create a more interesting painting is worth experimenting with. As I said before, you could later go into this and add some trees or rocks or some other item to turn effectively what's an abstract painting into a more impressionist painting, but that's really up to you. Right now I don't intend to um, add anything else to it. I like the way the colours blend into one another. Now right now the salt is starting to do its thing so what I find where the salt is you start to get these sort of pale patches. Sometimes they can look like you know, glitter on the water, sometimes like snowflakes or sometimes like uh, sparkles of light in amongst the, the sky or the, the foliage and that. It, it just depends and again with the salt it's something you you practice and play with so that when you use it you get a better idea of what effect it's going to create. No matter how you look at splatter it's still um, a sort of controlled uncontrolled technique. You can't you know put a mark exactly where you want it. You can't guarantee you're not going to get some dots somewhere where you don't want. With practice you can get pretty good at that but there's still that element of randomness which is what I like about it and I like what's one of the reasons I like watercolour because of that fluidity of it. It's, it lets you paint some very free paintings um, and very loose paintings. In a minute we'll come back and have a look at what the salt has done um, I just need to give the, um, the salt time to do its thing. So I'll just have a little break and then we'll come back once the salt has finished doing its job. You can see now how the salt has continued to lighten and modify parts of the painting. Now we just need to dry it thoroughly so that we can brush off any remaining salt on the surface of the paper. With the paper thoroughly dry now I can brush off any remaining salt on the paper making sure that the salt doesn't land in my palette. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration. If you have any questions please leave them below and as usual if you haven't yet subscribed please subscribe and hit the notification bell. I hope to see you back for future videos.